Hey guys, Mason here, and welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make these wrap sword handles on Blender. Let's get right into this. So I just recently learned how to go ahead and make these handles, and it's actually pretty simple. Also, by the way, this isn't really like the sword you would really use the handle on. You could use this handle on this kind of sword, but I made this one previously, and I feel like this handle kind of looks quite a bit better on that sword. But for like other swords, this handle would definitely look a lot better. So, so I'm going to go ahead and show how to make multiple versions of that handle. Such as, these aren't finished right here, but such as this one, that one is the previous one, and then this one right here. So, so let's go ahead and get right into this. So all you want to do is go ahead and grab your handle. Or if you don't currently have a handle, go ahead and make a cylinder, move it to the side, go into edit mode, we can go ahead and scale it down. And just go ahead and make a handle for your sword. You might need to get the size and stuff. So you could go over here, scale it up, and about right there. Yeah, about that right there is pretty much the size. There we go. So, so just go ahead and make a simple cylinder that is the size of your sword. Or if your sword handle is like curved, just go ahead and like curve it or do whatever. And then with your basic flat handle right here, what you want to go ahead and do is go out of it then go ahead and add a cube so shift a go ahead and add a cube let's go ahead and move it over here and then let's go to edit mode go ahead and scale it down and just scale it down a little bit not too much and I'll go ahead and show y'all what scaling it down does so about right there ish now go into edit mode go ahead and select all the sides so go ahead and click a to select all then click on this side right here and then click X, delete the edges, there we go. And now what you want to go ahead and do right here, and yeah, that is pretty much good. Go ahead and go to this little wrench tab on the right, where you go ahead and add modifiers. It is below this orange square, and it's a blue wrench. Go ahead and click add modifier, go ahead and add a screw modifier. And then you'll go ahead and see this giant circle. It might be facing a different way, or it might be smaller. But for this giant circle, what we're going to go ahead and do... Go ahead and go into the top view, and you'll see this little orange point. Go ahead and click G, or you could go ahead and move, use this arrow right here. And just go ahead and align it somewhat in the center of that cylinder. It doesn't have to be exactly in the center, but just close to the center. And now go ahead and select this, this thing again. Go ahead and go into edit mode, select this edge right here, and just go ahead and move it closer so we can go ahead and make that smaller. So yeah, it doesn't have to be too small. Let's just go ahead and make it like that, because all of this will go ahead and be wrapped on it anyway. We're just doing this to make it like easier to go ahead and use. Now on the side, go ahead and make sure that the axis is on Z, which it should automatically be on Z. And yeah, so for the screw, if you go ahead and move that up and down, you'll go ahead and see that it goes ahead and adds that curve right here. And yeah, so that is pretty simple. Y'all can go ahead and mess around with these settings on the right. We're just going to go ahead and set that back to normal. So yeah, so you can have the angle however much you want. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of a screw, just like that. And for the angle, you can go ahead and move it. It will go ahead and wrap around more. But don't use the angle thing right here for it to go ahead and wrap around more. Because there is a better and simpler way. And it will also allow it to have less vertices. An example, I have the statistics on right over here. How you turn that on, go ahead and click this. Statistics. And it will go ahead and show you how much vertices. I'm not in edit mode right now. So since I'm not in edit mode, it shows me how much vertices all of these things combined together equal. But if I go ahead and, well, if you go into edit mode right now, you can't really see it until we go ahead and apply them. But yeah, so let's go ahead and put that back at 360. You can go ahead and move this down, though, if you don't want it to go ahead and wrap all the way around. Like, if you want, like, a little curve just like that and you don't want it to wrap all the way around, then you can go ahead and move it like that. But we want it to wrap all the way around, so we're going to do 360 degrees. And now we're just going to go ahead and move this like this. Since this one is small, we only need a 0.1% screw. Make sure that kind of overlaps like this. It overlaps a little, so that is good for us. And now we're just going to go ahead and mess with the in interation thing right here. And go ahead and increase it until it goes all the way to the top of your sword. You can go even go ahead and make it a little bit more above. Like I could put it right there, but I'm going to go ahead and click one more time. So it goes ahead and looks like that. Move it a little bit downward as well. Actually, no, I'm going to go ahead and keep it at 8 because that will make the wrapping thing a lot easier. So about right there is good. Now once we have this, 
we can always go ahead and go back into edit mode, go into vertices select, and you can go ahead and mess with this. So we can go ahead and move this down and we'll go ahead and move it down for all of them. We want it to overlap a little bit, so we're just going to go ahead and put it about right there. Not too much, but enough. So there we go. And now on the right, we're going to go ahead and add a shrink wrap modifier. So there we go. This will go ahead and wrap it to our thing right here. Which actually, before we go ahead and do that, I want to go ahead and customize this handle a little bit. So not too much. I'm just going to go ahead and actually for this, let's go ahead and hide this for a second. We'll go ahead and come back to that. But for our handle, I'm going to go ahead and add some loop cuts. You don't need to do this. I'm just customizing the handle a little bit so it's not just straight. So, so I'm just going to go ahead and about like that. Yeah, that looks like a pretty good handle. Alright, just a little bit more texture. Now we're going to go ahead and go back to this. And uh, we, so we have our shrink wrap modifier right here. Go, for the target, go ahead and click this little eyedropper. Click on your uh, handle. There you go. And now it will kind of be hard to see because it will be wrapped to the handle. Now what we want to go ahead and do, go ahead and add a solidify modifier. And don't increase that too much. For now, just increase it a little bit. And just enough so you can go ahead and see it. Not too much. We'll go ahead and decrease this later on. But for now, just go ahead and do it so you can like see it a little bit. Just so you make sure that the stuff is working. And for now, it will kind of look weird. So, so now once we have this, go ahead and click add modifier. We are going to go ahead and add the last modifier. And this is the subdivision surface. There we go. And now it will look kind of weird. Just go ahead and ignore that though. For subdivision and surface, I usually do like one or two. For now, probably two. I'll go ahead and keep it at three for now. So once you have this, the handle will look pretty weird. But just go ahead and ignore that. Go ahead and click on your main handle part right here. Go ahead and click the little eye so you can go ahead and hide it. And then here you go. So you can go ahead and use this if you want, but this is not the handle we are going for right now. So what you want to go ahead and do, go back into the solidify modifier. And go ahead and turn down the thickness if it looks like this. And this will pretty much just go ahead and make it look a lot better. So, so here we go. And if you go ahead and put the thickness at zero, this is what it looks like originally. But if you go ahead and click it one more time, it will go ahead and make it look a little bit better. And if we want to have it a little bit thicker as well, we can go ahead and click it again. And there we go, that looks pretty good. And we can go ahead and click it more times if we want to. But if you go ahead and increase it too much, it starts to look weird. So make sure that you don't do that. But let's go ahead and put it where we want it to be. I'm probably going to do probably four. And now I'm going to do three actually. You can do more or less if you want, but this looks pretty good for now. And now what we want to go ahead and do, back down to subdivision. You can go ahead and move it up and down. So this is what zero looks like, pretty bad. But if you go ahead and put it at one, that looks a lot better. Now, if you don't want it to have too many vertices, I recommend just doing one subdivision surface. Like if you're trying to import this to Roblox or something, I recommend not having too much vertices. So if you don't want too much, then this is the thing for you. Also, something that I forgot to mention in the video, if you are trying to have a lot less vertices, what you can do is you can go up here to screw and you can go ahead and turn down the steps, the steps of viewport. This basically just goes ahead and like decreases it. Don't like put it down too much or else it just looks like this and looks really weird. But like the default is 16. So this 16 right here, y'all you can actually go ahead and move it down a little bit. You can go ahead and watch the vertices on the side. If you move it down to zero, it removes like 3,000 vertices or so. But yeah, so the default is 16. You don't probably don't move it down like 10 or so. But you can go ahead and move it down like one or two. Like if you want it to have like a thousand less vertices, you can go ahead and select it. You can go ahead and turn it down a few. Like right now I can turn it down like six. And you can't really notice much. It just kind of shrinks down a little bit. But then if we turn it down more, see like I turned it down more, it just kind of shrinks down. So we can have a little skinny handle. But if we turn it below five, then it just starts to look kind of weird. But yeah, you can go ahead and turn it down a little bit. Not too much, but we'll go ahead and add less vertices. And now, make sure, before you go ahead and move it around, you can't really move it around, y'all can go ahead and add your cylinder back in by unhiding it. But if you want to actually go ahead and move the handle around freely without having to have this cylinder, just go ahead and click on this. Go ahead and, if this is 100% how you want it, go ahead and click apply for all of these. So go ahead and click this little arrow, apply, 
and just go ahead and do it for all of the modifiers and now you can go ahead and move it around freely and y'all can go ahead and delete this original cylinder if you want just like that and now we have our handle right here so now once you have your handle you are pretty much done and you can go ahead and put it on your handle of your sword and yeah that is pretty much it but if you are trying to make a handle like this right here for a katana what you can go ahead and do this is like a second one that i made over here what you can go ahead and do let's go like this go ahead and turn this up a little bit you can go into edit mode before you go ahead and apply the modifiers and go ahead and grab the bottom vertice like this let's go ahead and go into this point of view and you can go ahead and make the li the line skinnier however like skinnier i think you want probably like right there is good and you also might want to go ahead and turn down the solidity solidity of it don't really know how to say that so there we go that's pretty much it but let's say if we want it to be crossing what you can go ahead and do i recommend applying the modifiers right now but we're not going to go ahead and do that you can go shift d to go ahead and duplicate it and then right click and do mirror on the y axis there we go and now you'll have this right here it might look a little bit weird so what you want to go ahead and do go ahead and select one of these go into edit mode well, actually, before we need to do that, we need to go ahead and apply the modifiers. So that is what we'll go ahead and do. Go to edit mode, select all, and go ahead and scale it down a little bit. And now it kind of looks like one is overlapping the other. You can scale it down a little bit more, but it might start to look a little bit weird. So there we go. Now it looks like one is overlapping the other. And that is basically how you make a handle for a katana. Again, you can go ahead and customize and stuff. And yeah, but that is how you go ahead and make handles on Blender though. So that's going to go ahead and be all for this video. So go ahead and leave a like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. And I'll see you all in the next video.